All week, we've been discussing the leaked draft opinion from the Supreme Court that would overturn Roe versus Wade. But there's other news on the life issue as well that foreshadows how the debate over abortion is likely to change in a post-Roe world. Yesterday, Tennessee Governor Bill Lee signed into law House Bill 2416 called the Tennessee Abortion-Inducing Drug Risk Protocol Act. Essentially, the bill prohibits mailing of chemical abortion drugs. Here to help us understand why this law is so important is Mary Zock, the director of FRC's Center for Human Dignity. Mary, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Joseph. So, Mary, why is it important? Uh, most people haven't thought about the fact that abortion drugs would be mailed, may not understand why they would be mailed. Why does this bill matter in the larger conversation about abortion and life? Well, when we're talking about chemical abortion drugs, we're talking about the, the pro-abortion pl movement's plan for increasing their profits and for decreasing the amount of, of what, what they would call care um, women receive. And so when we're talking about abortion drugs being put in the mail, um, this, this refers to a woman taking a, a two-pill two regimen. Um, the, the first of these pills uh, kills her, her unborn child, and, and the second um, expels the unborn child from the woman's body. So the, the use of these pills is extremely dangerous and, and can have life-threatening side effects for women. Um, who take these at later gestational ages when, when the risk of retained fetal parts is higher, when the risk of hemorrhage is higher, um, the risk of an undiagnosed ectopic pregnancy that, that leaves a woman um, at risk of death or the inability to have children for the rest of her life is very high as well. So the people of Tennessee recognized you know, a, a chemical abortion is always tragic because it takes the life of an unborn child. Um, but the abortion industry has abandoned women as well. And, and this bill is an attempt to at least protect women. Now, Mary, we can hear some of the evidence of your pro-life work there in the background, and we love it. Um, but we're going to let you get back to that in a second. But a couple of the questions here for you, um, because how did in, in a world where we are hoping and praying that is post row very, very soon. Why is chemical abortion becoming so important to the abortion industry? Well, we saw in 2016, Planned Parenthood increased the number of chemical abortions they did to 43% of all the abortions that they performed. We know that today that number is likely much higher. Um, and, and we know that as that increase has taken place, Planned Parenthood's profits have also increased. So we know that this is their plan for the future. Um, it's, it's cheaper for them. They don't need a brick and mortar building to, to distribute chemical abortion pills. They don't need doctors for uh, women to, to see. All they need is someone willing to prescribe and ship out these, um, these abortion pills. So, Mary, is it fair to say that in a post-Roe world where you have um, many states where abortion is illegal and many states where abortion is, is encouraged and subsidized and all of those things, that in the states where abortion is illegal, unless something is done, there will be, should be this mass um, industry of chemical abortions being mailed into those states where women are taking these chemical abortion drugs hundreds or thousands of miles away from the, from the provider? There certainly will. And it's worth noting that, that a state like Tennessee has complete protections for unborn children if Roe is overturned. Um, but, but there are other states, states like California and New York, who, who have committed to uh, providing abortions in places like California where they're committed to shipping out abortion pills. Mm -hmm. um, so we do need to protect against that. Now, the, these... Um, what do you think the response should be from the pro-life community, practically speaking? We see some of the legislative response here. And uh, is there any indication that other states are going to follow suit? Are there other things that the pro-life world should be doing to uh, get in front of the shift from surgical to chemical abortions? 
Well, you know, the, the laws like the law that was passed in Tennessee are extremely helpful. Um, working to, to bring about uh, knowledge about what chemical abortions can do to a woman's body is, is very helpful. This past week, the state of Oklahoma passed full protections for unborn children. Those, those laws obviously also um, take care of the chemical abortion problem. Um, so any work that we can do to protect unborn children in the womb is, is helpful at this point. And we are going to continue to do that. Mary Zock, we appreciate your time. We appreciate you stepping away from uh, your priorities there for a moment to be with us. So we'll let you get back to that and look forward to talking to you next week. Thanks so much, Joseph.